Dr. Ajita, you could start with the introduction. Okay, sir. Good afternoon, one and all. So today we are here for the second lecture of day three of 21 days national training course on advances in veterinary research for sustainable development of livestock sector. So we are honored today to have with us Dr. S. B. N. Rao as our expert speaker. I welcome you, sir. And before we proceed, I, Ajayata Riyalaj, the course coordinator of this training course, take an opportunity to introduce Dr. Rao. Dr. S. B. N. Rao is presently working as in charge of Animal Nutrition Division at ICAR, National Institute of Animal Nutrition and Physiology, Bengaluru. Sir has joined ICR on 5th August 1991 and served at National Dairy Research Institute and Central Institute for Research on Goats before joining NIANP. Sir has a vast research experience of more than 30 years and has published more than 50 research articles and 20 conference papers. He is associated with many scientific societies like Fellow of Society of Applied Biotechnology, member of National Academy of Veterinary Sciences, life member of Animal Nutrition Society of India, Animal Nutrition Association, etc. So today he will deliver a lecture on the topic, recent trends in utilization of unconventional feed resources for sustainable livestock production. So it is a matter of immense pleasure to have you with us. So without wasting much time, shall we start with the presentation? <coughs> Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are very much audible. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Ms. Ajayta, uh, for the nice introduction. Actually, there's small confusion. I have sent this biodata to some uh, uh, NADCL also. I think there's some no problem. Mm. Thanks once again. And uh, how many participants are there so far in this uh, uh, registered for the training program? There are about 150 participants. 150 participants. Okay, okay, no problem. 75 of them have joined right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now we are joining start, in no? the process. Right? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, can you click on the hide option at the bottom? Okay, uh, very good afternoon to one and all. Uh, myself, uh, actually, um, Madam has already introduced that right now I'm working as a uh, in charge of animal nutrition division at a, a National Institute of Animal Nutrition and Physiology. Uh, in this institute, I have been working since uh, 2005. Prior to that, uh, I worked in uh, Goat Research, Central Goat Research Institute, Makdum. Uh, where we had mostly worked on applied aspects of animal nutrition uh, in different uh, uh, projects like NADP project and uh, uh, some institute projects and also we have established some good facilities for um, mineral uh, labs like uh, atomic absorption spectrophotometer and all we have established there. Uh, so. No, the topic is a hot topic. Now it is actually, uh, as you know, uh, for animal nutritionists, uh, even for any livestock production scientist, it is uh, uh, always a challenging task to feed the animals uh, properly with all nutrients like protein, energy, minerals, vitamins, etc. So as you know, uh, we have different livestock cattle, buffalo, sheep, goat, and poultry, and aqua. Uh, poultry and aqua, they are more or less kind of commercialized. So uh, it's highly remunerative and uh, it is, uh, it's like almost it's, it is attained its industry status. Uh, whereas for sheep, goat, and also uh, this uh, cattle and buffalo, uh, they are more or less, uh, there are almost like uh, majority of them are under extensive or a little bit semi intensive. And uh, around peri urban and urban areas, you find them more intensive systems also. 
so it is very much important so speed as you know speed contributes almost to 70% of the cost of production so any minor changes if you make in terms of uh, its uh, uh, increasing its uh, nutrient availability or uh, cost uh, then it will affect the profitability of the livestock industry so this is the nutshell uh, moreover this unconventional feed of course these are not restricting completed unconventional feed resources also we like to discuss something uh, some of the strategic feeding how you do how to improve the utilization of these fibrous residues uh, all those things in the course of time we'll be discussing uh, how many animal nutritionists are there of course i cannot uh, uh, probably there may be plenty of i have seen those participants profess i think four to five animal nutritionists are there so more or less it is it's a general topic so all the uh, animals uh, personally involved in this livestock uh, uh, industry are um, i think i hope they'll be benefited by this talk okay uh at uh, national institute of animal nutrition and uh, physiology uh we have worked out the requirements and availability of this feed resources uh, by 2025 if you see the uh, requirement of uh, dry matter uh, almost the requirement uh, the requirement for the almost 840 million tons uh, whereas the projected availability is around uh, 586 uh, million tons so there is a deficit of almost 43.4% uh, in the dry matter compared to next coming to crude protein uh, almost the requirement is 74 million tons uh, whereas availability is almost you have about 54.8 million tons so there will be a deficit of 36% roughly coming to the total digestible nutrients it is also uh, as you know this total digestible nutrients is a measure of uh, energy value of the feed so it comes to almost 417 the requirement so availability is around 313 uh, million tons so the, the deficit is almost 33% so if you come across the also we have worked out some of the um, what is the projected availability of different feed resources by 2025 uh, what was uh, there in 2011 what would be in 2025 if you see this uh, dry fodder requirement out of uh, say for example 100% 62.5% the available it is coming from dry fodder dry fodder in the sense that all cereal straws rice straw wheat straw maize straw many of the uh, materials like in uh, if you go to rajasthan you pearl millet fodder is very important like sorghum fodder Uh, so many of the this dry fodders contribute almost majority so 63% roughly it is coming from dry fodder whereas in the same quantity it will uh, it is projected to increase by almost 67% almost say to a 4% by 2025 this is basically due to available increase in the uh, cropping pattern and crop production uh, probably the availability of this rice and wheat straw will be more by 2025 uh, coming to this uh, green fodder it was projected Uh, around 28 percent from green fodder, whereas in 2025 it will be like there will be probably the green fodder availability might be reduced because of this uh, maybe intensification of the agriculture and other things. Uh, coming to the concentrates uh, like brands, oil cakes, and green greens. Uh, in case of brands, for example, the roughly it will be like. Uh, mm, uh 2.6 percent in the in case of 2000 it's almost it's static the availability from brands oil cakes and concentrates will be almost same across the periods so this is the projected availability what we had done at uh, nant so this is one of the interesting slide what you can see uh suppose we have many animal numbers the animal numbers uh, but uh, as you know uh the productivity of our animals is quite low uh so we had done one exercise suppose uh if you reduce the number of productive animals say for example 90 millions 
numbers to say 70 million. Suppose these are basically they did for milk production. So suppose if 89 to 90 million tons, 90 million cattle heads are there. To reduce this to 70, then the productivity increase. Suppose you are increasing the productivity by uh, uh, for the one that they have calculated two scenarios. For example, here scenario one. Scenario one is 5.24 liters per day. Uh, whereas in scenario two, it is 6.76. So roughly, I will, suppose if we can improve improve the productivity of these animals by uh, 1.5 liters a day, uh, there is a tremendous uh, there is a reduction in the requirement of the feeds. Suppose, for example, uh, you come to the milk production <laughs> remaining the same. Hello. The milk production, if it remains same for 172 million tons. So this comes to see 365 million tons. For example, if it is required, if the animal is giving only 5.24 liters, it will, the the requirement will come down to 316. So there is a suppose they increase a tremendous requirement, uh, improve uh, uh, there is a productivity increase. So there is a lot of less stress on the there will be less stress on the feed resource availability. That is one exercise we did. So roughly almost 50 million tons. You can save the feed uh, by reducing the uh, inc increasing the productivity of these animals. So, this is with this brief background. Just I would like to uh, come to the actual topic. So, why we need unconventional feed resources? So, unconventional feed resources. Uh, by name itself, you can say it is not conventional. They are not being fed conventionally, but they have got potential uh, to be fed as feed resources, conventional feed resources, provided uh, they, they are more palatable. And also, if they, are, uh, they have any uh, anti-nutritional factors, if they are effectively removed, uh, thus those parameters are properly met, then you can uh, feed them as a conventional feed resource. So, as you know, as already I said, there is a shortage of feed resources. So, under cost, the feed cost is very high. For example, recently the poultry, if you see, uh, the soya bean meal price almost went up to 100 rupees a kilo. So, almost uh, the price has gone doubled. Or it, so, now the problem is government again, it is taking, uh, uh, importing the, some soya and all, uh, GM soya. Uh, so, because of that, then alternate feeds like the uh, dried poultry, uh, dried distillery grains, like that, they are being used uh, in place of uh, soya, of course, by balancing the amino acids. And also, one of the, suppose if the productivity of the food crops, it is increased, no problem. Suppose, uh, and this is also a challenge. So, because of this, uh, we need some, uh, uh, the requirement of this uh, unconventional feed resource, so we need to use. Coming to the increased fodder, this is also a challenge. So, if, suppose if you can increase the fodder price, well and good. Otherwise, again, you need the unconventional feed resources. And one more thing uh, is that the, the crop residues, whatever we are feeding, they are highly fibrous. Uh, fibrous in the sense that uh, they are more highly lignocellulosic. So, the bonds are very difficult to break. So, in, in, in turn, it leads to uh, less digestibility. So, if you can do some economical treatment, uh, I'm, I'll be discussing in uh, my future uh, uh, this thing. Uh, if you can do uh, some, for example, urea ammoniation to break these uh, uh, lignocellulosic bonds, so it is definitely, if you can improve the uh, digestibility by at least by 5 to 7 units, it will, it will increase, it will, it will have the tremendous impact on the productivity of the animals. And also some of the feed processing technologies. So uh, pelleting or whatever, about baling, uh, they do some of the things like, uh, of course, it is in, uh, in poultry and other uh, feed pelleting is common. So if you can economize some of the processing technologies, also it has some effect. And also they may rem remove the toxins are present in the unconventional feeds. And also this export and import policies also are coming up now. So. Uh, due to this export uh, of soya bean. Earlier, they were doing the oils, so many oil seed mills are being exported. So, because of that, there is a dearth of uh, good quality protein supplements in the Indian market. So, it is also causing one of the uh, problems. 
so uh, coming to this in this uh, scenario we need this alternate feed resources so we need to identify and you identify properly regional regional specific by products if we can identify and uh, mm, and you can feed them uh, to the animals uh, so definitely it, it will give little bit uh, add on to this uh, uh, feed it will add to the feed basket and as, as well as it will it might improve the productivity of the livestock so coming to this uh, coming to actually i have uh, discussed uh, what all the fiber uh, hyper, this fibrous residues what we are uh, encounter what are mostly what we worked at our institute uh, that that those things only i am highlighting other things uh, of course any doubts are there you can put it in chat box you can discuss at the end so come of the some of the fibrous by product what we had worked uh, at our place like uh, sugar cane uh, trash this is one of the important uh, uh, by product that is present in, uh, which is available uh, so this is also one of the uh, requirement of some of the committee high powered committee they said they, then we evaluated this then some of the maize cobs these are also very much uh, available this also you can use them as a part of complete uh, um, to total mixed ration or complete feed block you can make and it is easy to transport and also and at also storage point of view it has very much it can store them for a uh, few months some of the sunflower heads also as a, our people have worked uh, uh, it is one of the major uh, um, of course uh, this is also uh, uh, some milk production experiment they are conducted and this is very important one uh, in our in, uh, institute dr nk s goda has worked on arica sheath uh, this is basically arica uh, uh, it is uh, is a uh, droppings from this uh, and they, they have, they have, it is also tried as a it is especially it is very much important in a, uh, high rainfall regions and other mallard regions where this uh, areca plantations are more and also due to the difficult terrain uh, it is difficult to transport straw so this uh, is a, as a replacement of uh, straw paddy straw uh, this uh, areca sheath has been tried and it is very is a success story and they have, often one of a few patents also for how uh, uh, some machines also they have developed this is very much a, uh, important one uh, as from as one important achievement of our nnp so coming to this uh, arika i think most some of the people uh, in this uh, some of these uh, participants are from this uh, area so if you see these are the arika trees so this uh, this they'll be droppings like this they this, they'll come, come fall into the uh though these things they are collecting uh, you can see these are the things they are collecting then after this collecting mostly they are going for uh, plate arica plate uh, uh, plates for uh, functions and all if you see like spoons they can make small sort of dishes uh, and plate and all they are making so these uh, things um, they fetch a lot of uh, money so after that then sort of some sort of wastage also will be there so this wastage what they are doing simply they have developed a very a uh, small machine this is called arica sheath thrasher so by using this uh, by thrashing this uh, uh, stems they have made it small small pieces okay uh, you can see this is the machine the, the, the so many machines they have supplied to different player parts of uh, karnataka and other places so they have made this almost fine uh, chafed material and they are simply transporting to the different places so they have conducted few uh, trials uh, with the animals they, they it can uh, uh, sustain it, it safely can replace with paddy straw so if we see the availability is almost can, they have estimated 4 lakh tons almost point, uh, 4 lakh tons is 0.4 lakh tons a million 0.4 million tons of this arica sheath is available so this is one of the potential uh, like this uh, some regional by products have to be identified and they, and once you fully evaluate them then they can be added to the feed basket so like this how this uh, uh, sheath is being uh, uh, they are just uh, it is being thrashed okay uh, this uh, first it will the, the, they are going in, in, it is going inside this uh, machine and also once then it is go to small small pieces then they are grinding it after grinding it they are mixing in the uh, uh, this uh, total mixed ration 
uh, almost uh, their the total mixtration contained 40% arica sheath the 40% arica sheath uh, uh, and they fed to the animals so almost they could get a 5 to 7% improvement in the milk yield for example if a cow is yielding a 10 kg of milk uh, for example uh, almost roughly they could they could get a improvement of 1 liter milk production in treated groups so that itself adds to the uh, well uh, add to the income to the farmers this arika sheath this is uh, if you uh, compare uh, if you see the nutrient composition of this arika sheath compared to paddy stand arika sheath it's almost uh, you can say One minute. Oh, yeah, 3.8% uh, 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 almost 3.3%. And also, uh, if you see the ash percentage, uh, acid insoluble ash, yeah, this important is the acid insoluble. So, paddy straw contains a lot of acid insoluble ash. That is nothing but insoluble uh, ash. So, we are this Arika sheet contains 3. Point. This is very important uh, uh, parameter so that uh, this di the digestibility of the Arika sheath is better compared to uh, your paddy straw. Uh, suppose if you see that uh, total digestible nutrients almost for 30, uh, 48 point, uh, see, almost one or one and a half point, one and a half unit improvement in total digestible nutrient, and also is having less lignin. So it is less lignified compared to paddy straw. So IV DMD, IV or the organic matter digestibility in vitro also almost it is one, one unit better, it's almost comparable to paddy straw. Coming to the next, next is a uh, uh, sugarcane trash. So this is also one of the uh, important uh, trash. Actually, it's not. Uh, it is a uh, what is the left over in the uh, field after the harvest of the sugarcane. Huh? So this will be left over in the, uh, the. They are simply farmers. What they do, they simply uh, they either mulch it. Uh, basically, they you should go for mulching, or sometimes uh, we observe some little bit uh, from some farmers if they suppose they want to uh, go for immediate next uh, uh, sowing so they simply burn it also so what uh, we are planning uh, what we thought okay this is uh, uh, we collected this trash materials uh, and also since it is also is very bulky material so we collected it and also uh, what we did uh, we used uh, this as a part of a complete total mixed ration so total mixed ration uh, and we conducted one small trial uh, using the cattle. Mm, so what you can say uh, is this uh, straw is uh, this trash is almost uh, comparable to your uh, finger millet straw. Finger millet is uh, that is nothing but uh, Elvisin Karakana is, uh, is a staple um, in Karnataka it is available. So this, uh, this finger millet itself is, is better than paddy straw. So you can say this is uh, better than paddy straw. Uh, and also this is uh, the availability also almost it, it is a huge availability almost 10 million tons uh, if you consider two to three percent of the cane weight uh, so the availability is very huge so this is very much uh, beneficial uh, this uh, can suppose only thing uh, we need to some of the some kvk colleagues also there so they have to uh, see that uh, this forest uh, if you can establish some some simple chaffing in it is enough if you just chaff it and transport it to the nearby dairies and it it works out uh, very profitable to the farmers so compared to this uh, uh you were this thing uh, uh compare comparatively almost uh, this uh, similar cp similar ct is there uh, fiber of course is a bit uh, fiber fibrous Com uh, ndf also is almost compared to finger millet it is uh, uh, NDF, ADF, or, or more, and hemicellulose, uh, it's uh, not okay. The dry matter digestibility, if you see, is not that comparable to finger millet extra, but uh, definitely it is uh, uh, on par with paddy extra because uh, this uh, one what we observed. Coming to the maize cobs and sheath, these are the actually uh, some of the things which are available. Uh, this uh, especially due to this. Uh, maize coming in a big way so here this maize cops offer a uh, is also one of the potential dry rough edge so here for example if you have this uh, these are the blocks uh, complete feed blocks of maize cob basic blocks you see these these blocks are uh, 
almost uh, can preserve they, they can be transported uh, very easily and also you can preserve them so this is one of the thing and if you see almost by 180 kg of cops you can obtain from 1000 kg of the shell maize shell so this dried maize cops and sheath uh, after grain removal a good source of roughage having more reserves of cellulose and hemi this is one of the advantage it is having more cellulose and hemi cellulose so this is uh, uh, good for uh, cattle so need need to be grow of course you cannot uh, give it directly you have to ground them and you can even replace the 50% of the dry roughage this is one of the important uh, uh, dry roughage you can uh, think of and uh, they it contains about 3 to 4% protein and 40 to 45% a good quality fiber is available because hemi cellulose and cellulose is having more coming to the next uh, important one is uh, sunflower heads so this is also one of the uh, you are used as a dry fodder here so sunflower head is a residue after extraction of the seeds so this uh, crushes and is uh, almost uh, comparatively other uh, straw this has you know, almost 78% protein it is having and fiber content is about 45 to 50% so dry, it's almost like a dry matter digestibility 50 any dry uh, roughage normally paddy and other this uh, wheat straw contains about 40% tdn we say so they are more than 40 about 50 55 45 like that it is better better than this uh, conventional straws so any you can even include them safely as a 40% of your roughage source and uh, we, we some trials have been conducted in our institute so they found no adverse effects have been found this uh, by feeding this sunflower head based total mixation so coming to this uh, these are the dry roughages what we have just discussed and you can think uh, what all the things are available in your uh, area uh, those things uh, you can just uh, what is the best simply best uh, way of is to chaff the dry roughages if you got a chaff cutter or mechanical chaff cutter or hand chaff cutter so this of chaffing itself improves the it improves the intake and also it it conserves the energy in terms of chewing and all so this chaffing is simply can do and feed them as a part of total mixation because as such it may not some of the not palatable so you can uh, and you can avoid the wastage of this dry roughages you can uh, uh, one of the best uh, approach is to uh, urea ammoniate uh, so it will improve the digestibility in this context i would like to highlight one of the uh, machine developed by uh, bopal central institute of agriculture engineering bopal what they did they developed one on the go urea spraying solution uh, while baling of the straw so what this you can come so this is the uh, uh, once it is harvested uh, it is a baler so what uh, this uh, one, uh, one scientist mr such a dr such a prakash what he did he has uh, innovated Uh, yes, uh, this blue color thing is a tank, tank containing uh, urea solution. That urea solution will be sprayed uh, on this base wh while baling itself. It is sprayed, so it is a value addition. It, once it is sprayed, this urea solution is sprayed, uh, and then it will be like uh, uh, wrapped in a plastic sheet, and it can be stored for three to four weeks. After three uh, four weeks, you can just uh, uh, remove this base and you can feed it to the animals. so at nnp what we did uh, we just uh, uh, optimize this level of urea and uh, uh, this parameters for this rice and wheat straw uh, if you see uh, recommended combination around 4% urea level and around 50% added moisture uh, it was observed to be better uh, increasing the fruit protein from 6 6 to 12% in case of uh, rice straw whereas in case of uh, Uh, wheat straw the added level of 5.6% and 70% moisture uh, it has improved the uh, cp from 3 almost 3.6 to 10% so this was there was a improvement of protein percentage nothing but protein is nothing but it's a urea so urea is a non protein nitrogen as you know crude protein is only the you are only estimate we estimate only the nitrogen so whatever the urea nitrogen also will it will add up to the protein so anyhow ruminants you cannot feed it to the pre ruminant or other calves you only have to put to post ruminant um, after 6 months of this uh, uh, age so this uh, non ruminant uh, animals also you cannot feed so only for post ruminant cattle above 6 months of age you can start doing
so if you see the ivdmd ivdmd almost you can say there is improvement of 3 units in case of uh, rice straw uh, whereas in case of uh, wheat uh, this uh, wheat straw almost you can say two and half unit improvement of ivdmd was observed due to this spraying of this uh, urea solution while baling the this is one of the technology front line technology they have already uh, been commercialized and also it is receiving lot of attention nowadays these are all the things what uh, i want to tell about this uh, regarding this uh, dry roughages uh, coming to of course this you say why the tree fodders are very conventional okay these are all conventional but uh, just i would like to emphasize uh, since we are trying to uh, target the sustainable uh, livestock production so sustainable livestock production means uh, you need to uh, think of all these local feed resources which are having better nutritive value we are then in that context tree fodder is one of the extremely important uh, and uh, valuable for feed resource especially in the hill regions and other rajasthan uh, and some of the arid regions of the country so this is very important so i am just covering some of the tree fodders also so here it is a very important uh, so okay semi arid and arid region because when when we worked at magdum so we found so many tree fodders so we observed uh, they are really good because especially small ruminants like uh, a goat they browse upon a variety of uh, tree fodders and also uh, in uh, i just uh, have some uh, regarding the rajasthan and other places they used to even uh, store this uh, tree fodders especially even in uh, other places like uh, uh, hill regions like himachal and jammu and kashmir they store these uh, dry feed tree fodders to be fed during extreme winter conditions so some of the good examples you can see uh, subobal sesbenia these are some of the important things glyricidia ard khejri desi babol neem like this many other mulberry and moringa moringa of course it is coming in a big way so our people have worked on moringa also uh, this uh, moringa can be a is a wonder uh, feed resource you can say Uh, and also bear so this especially some of the leguminous uh, tree fodder like subobol sesbenia and moringa they have got a very good amount of protein protein in the sense that they go to almost 18% minimum to almost they go up to 20 22% it's almost like a concentrated mixtures so you can uh, they can act as a really uh, these dry leaves the dry leaves of this uh, they can actually re- substitute in costly concentrated supplements so this is one of the important thing so if you see the some of the tree leaves like uh, we have uh, worked out this uh, uh, mineral composition of some of the tree leaves like ardu people subobol neem mulberry uh, they are very fairly go- good source of calcium you can see almost uh, 1.7 to 3% calcium you can find in these tree leaves of course phosphorus is more uh, little bit okay uh but uh, if you see the trace elements also they are they are very fairly good good source of trace elements like zinc copper iron and manganese all those things this we worked at uh, our earlier institute in makdum uh this is uh, one of the important uh, thing i would like to uh, stress upon this actually i worked in uh, uh, australia uh, long back in uh, Mm, 2008 there were actually there is a problem of mostly the sheep like there are there are merino sheep merino fine wool they are they are fed, they are having only fine wool and the problem with this pasture pasture if you see uh, during winter time it is completely uh, dry and also the, it will not be sufficient for the uh, this uh, this require for fulfilling the requirement of this merino sheep so there uh, uh, this uh, this particular gentleman is uh, dr levi scon is my mentor at uh, uh, university of new england armidale so what uh, he suggested me that uh, we need to develop on our supplementation strategy so supplementation strategy uh, is is very simple simple and also it should be practical and also in australia uh, there is a problem of labor labor in the sense uh, is very expensive to hire laborers so there is a pay parity is very less in uh, uh, even for a professor to if you say can take the pay difference is very less is not like in india uh, is huge difference but in uh, in other foreign countries it is very less so one or two times difference only will be there 
so the labor quality labor is expensive so what they say they, they suggested uh, they wanted to see only once a week supplement they don't want to feed daily so so we just did a experiment uh, simulating this for a uh, field condition Sim we conducted one stall feeding experiment in merino uh, uh, the uh, merino uh, this the drop out weaner lamps so in these lamps what we did we we fed uh, cotton seed meal at a two times a week two two frequencies uh, twice a day once a twice a uh say two times uh, weekly thrice okay weekly thrice or weekly once on two levels 0.2 percent of the body weight and 0.4 percent of the body weight to our surprise uh if you see uh 0.2 percent of the if you feed uh, uh csm uh, this is uh, cotton seed meal 0.2 percent of the body weight once a week almost it is uh, sufficient to uh, in terms of its uh, maintaining sustaining its growth and also as well as it's uh, maintaining the whole body protein turnover all those things uh, almost uh, similar parameters were obtained so what uh, they are suggesting so they are suggesting to this uh, uh, farm big big for commercial farmers you just feed constant cotton seed meal once a day once a week uh, so that it will it will take care of the protein requirements for entire week so that was the uh, approach what they are following Mm, because the labor requirement is very labor cost is there so the minimum supplementation levels with less frequent also we can offer to this sheep okay am i okay uh, anyway just one uh, it's, i'm a uh, it's fine i think it's more uh, hello yes sir it is fine till now sir okay okay right thank you so coming to this uh, after this uh, this dry materials so we, now we, some of the other class of animal class of feed stuffs what we had is high moisture products so high moisture products means so they have a lot of moisture and they need to be uh, consumed very fast so otherwise there will be spoilage so so these are the there is a challenge in this uh, to utilize these products uh so like this we have seen some of the banana fruit waste like banana tomato a vegetable tomato waste or jack fruit residues and some of the dried and near distilleries you can get some brewery grains uh some of the brewery there will be wet breweries also brewery grains also available so these need to be consumed very fast so for that purpose uh, uh we have to work out some of the strategies so if you see the fruit and uh, fruit and vegetable residues uh the post harvest losses were estimated uh, from fruit and vegetables almost 5.8 to 18% so there is a lot of uh, post harvest losses and they are not effectively being used because they are either composted or dumped in landfills so because it is causing a lot of environmental pollution as you know these are all the common things so you need to develop some suitable methods to convert fruit and vegetable waste into livestock feed resources some of them you need to conserve them mostly mostly by silage other or you can simply dry them like say dggs suppose uh, dry uh, distillery grains if you can dry them uh, it's a, it's very valuable uh, feed resource especially even to replace some of the costly protein supplements uh, okay suppose if you have some cluster of dairy farms in the, in the vicinity of this food processing industries so you can just integrate with them uh, then uh, integrate and also so that uh, they they need not be transported too far they can be utilized so that also we can uh, one of the approach you can uh, follow so coming to the product like banana by products are very like uh, if you see india it has about 14.2 no, million tons production uh, so tamil nadu maharashtra and uh, uh, 32 uh, the major major uh, uh, states so 30 to 40 residues from fruit peels and they can be ensailed with hair straw and they can use as it is feeding this is one of the uh, good thing and also it, it, it has about four to six percent protein so it, it basically is a major is energy source uh, so total sugars almost it is uh, 40 to 50 to 60 percent and tdn 72 percent so this is one of the <clears throat> high energy is a basically is an energy source so it can be used as a fodder supplement source in cattle that may not completely replace fodder. Coming to the banana stems, this contains about 3% CP, 25% fiber, little fibrous compared to 
this thing and also you know this uh, uh, therapeutic value of banana stem now uh, in urban uh, markets in supermarkets banana stem is a delicacy it's very expensive so uh, they have some therapeutic properties also so uh, this of course in uh, some of the places like we have, we have visited some of the south kanara dakshin kannada district and these banana stems they are offering to the cattle uh, by simply harvesting stems and slowly they are making into pieces offering to the cattle so leaves of course banana leaves on other form so they can be even given in fresh or dry form they can be fed to dairy cattle as a raffage source so it also has some of the uh, higher cp around 9 to 10% cp and 23 23 24% fiber this is a good fiber so fiber source also is available this is also another one important uh, one is jackfruit residue so jackfruit residue also is uh, almost uh, uh, it is found in most of the indian states uh, of course in uh, karnataka it is there is some jack federation also is there so they they are telling that this jackfruit waste uh, whether we can utilize as a feed resource so we just uh, preliminarily evaluated it so it, uh, it contains around 60 to 65 percent uh, uh, sugars and which is a low protein so it is uh, simply anything uh, these things the unsaling is a better since it is having high moisture or you can even uh, if you have some uh, some heat uh, some dryers are available you can even chop them and you can dry them and use it as a bran also so this is uh, like the value chain if you see these are the jack uh, fruits so the jack fruits uh, they'll be uh, after the once they remove those things inside so this this is a light our light material these are the outer core this thing can be even uh, you can uh, uh, dry them and you can offer to the livestock this uh, this uh, sort of uh, then then this of course this is you can uh, as a bran also you can use it but this, dried means you can preserve preserve better or you can even unsell it also coming to this jackfruit uh, the nutritive value it's about it contains uh, 67% cp on dry basis and ether extract about 4 to 5% ether extract also it is having bit more and fiber it is 18 to 19% so if you see this also uh, very less acid insoluble ash so compared to other your uh, uh, dry fodder this uh, acid insoluble ash is very less so that is highly digestible uh, stuff and also is a this bit lignified of course 6% the outer coating as you know jackfruit thing is a lignified stuff but if you see this a tdn almost 60 to 65 this is a uh, you can even uh, replace a medium quality better quality stover or even medium quality green fodder it can replace this is also a very important uh, one of this pineapple fruit residue here also if you see uh, this pineapple uh, after this industry this crown this will be and uh, thrown into the landfills it causing a lot of uh, environmental pollution so what uh, here you can say uh, you can just best way to preserve it as a silage uh, so once it is uh, silage you can even preserve it for more period and uh, it contains about 67% crude protein and 72% tdn and the nutritive value is, uh, is better than maize green fodder so silage is the best way to conserve this pineapple fruit residue silage of pineapple fruit can be used as a green fodder used as a tmr so that uh, uh, there will not be any segregation by these uh, dairy animals so they even uh, found some encouraging results uh, by feeding these uh, uh, pineapple uh, fruit residue uh, in terms of better performance and also reduction in your protein cost, feed cost coming to this uh, another important uh, one is a tomato tomato pomes especially this also we worked if you see india ranks second in the world in tomato production contributing to 10 to 18% of the world population world production so india is one of the leader so the by product of tomato processing industry is a source of nutrients almost it contains we have seen, we have seen this uh, uh, residue it, it is a source of good pigments almost it is having 11 to 13% ether extract is it's a source of pigment especially lycopene and uh, it is a very good so antioxidant source so this is uh, uh, very very good only thing you need to uh, dry it otherwise uh, or maybe you may you need to unsell it only thing it has a lot of protein so high protein materials difficult to unsell but drying is a better option here 
Uh, so the, the, the product, as you know, that uh, nowadays a lot of all uh, hue and cry is uh, tomatoes are being. Uh, there's no better market. They are just uh, throwing on the roads and all. So it is. Uh, we should link it to food processing industries. Uh, so at the time of harvest, we should be able to. Uh, our sun drying and art artificial drying also you can do that, but it's very energy intensive. Otherwise, uh, you can uh, just. Uh, we mix it with uh, 5 to 10 percent straw so reduce a bit uh, moisture percentage and you can go for ensiring also so these are the things uh, because we, this uh, pomace can be you, you can even replace the this almost i said you it is almost having 19 to 20 percent uh, cp uh, so it is almost like a concentrate mixture okay or you can use as a total mixture ration at 10 percent level so this is uh, one of the valuable feed resource you can tap this is coming to muskmelon is also one of the industry so these things also you can use them as a uh, you can either make it, mix it with a bran all the strategy is the same high moisture means either you can ensile it mix it a little bit or if you have some if you want to dry it also you can dry and use it as a dry feed resource uh, this is an important one brewery waste so in the brewery waste uh, it is also there are two two forms are available dry as well as wet wet brewery waste it is very challenging to uh, use only thing you need to complete within uh, uh, two three days otherwise it will spoil it will rot so this has to be mixed with bran maize or mineral mixtures and you can feed it to the cattle but uh, what uh, some people have observed it improves the milk production. It's instantly it improves the milk production. Probably, but you need not. Uh, if you stop it, the problem is uh, the animals will not be able to. Uh, the, there will be sudden drop in milk production. So it is. You have to be extremely careful in uh, uh, advocating this brewery waste. Otherwise, the dried uh, grain. Uh, so suppose the dried grain, grain distilleries are there, that you can even uh, use substitute soybean meal, especially in case of this. Uh, High soya for layers and other things, you can even substitute soya meal, soybean by proper adjusting the amino acids. This is another important uh, uh, this, uh, food, uh, food is the uh, hotel food scraps. So you can see there are about 1500 tons out of 5000 tons food waste comes from hotel industry. So this is a major chunk of uh, uh, from hotel industry. So there's a tremendous opportunity it is there for to uh, utilize this waste so what you need to do uh, you, there'll be some more uh, uh, they should be able to sub, uh, collect segregate this biodegradable with non-biodegradable and also you have to process them uh, suppose heat treatment or microbiological treatment so that this uh, waste can be incorporated to the dairy diets Uh, some of these uh, things like uh, coming to another class of uh, uh, thing high protein and high energy resources so these energy these uh, are uh, what we worked almost here three to four products we worked here one is neem pongamia castor and uh, this is amr this is ayurvedic medicinal residues So this is the neem seed cake. So what uh, here we had uh, neem seed because as you know, uh, it is one of the uh, universal tree present in less than part of the country. So the potential availability of this uh, is almost 0.5 million tons here. So this uh, neem oil is a source of as a director and is a biopesticide. So the residual uh, cake contains uh, some of the anti-nutritional factors like azadir actin, selenin, bitter principles, and that is unpalatable. So we have developed one process to remove the oil and subsequently remove reflection to aqueous solids. Uh, to remove oil and aqueous solids. So hello. Dr. Mamta, kindly unmute yourself. Yes. Yeah. So uh, this uh, detoxification process has been uh, standard using with the help of industrial partners like uh, Dabar Ayurved. So this kind of particular brownish powder, uh, once uh, you completely de, de fat and detoxify, this powder is almost having 50% protein. So this pro product we have included, we have tested in uh, different uh, 
uh, species cattle uh, sheep goat and other pairs then it can be uh, for dairy cattle uh, we can include it as almost uh, uh, replace this uh, 50 percent of your conventional protein supplement for a medium producing cattle uh, it can be included so uh, even some uh, other institutes they even uh, uh, use some alkali treatment uh, with alkali treatment uh, soaking in one percent sodium hydroxide but this is uh, for field for field level suppose if anybody any farmer wants to use so this is one of the thing you can just soak it with one percent sodium hydroxide and uh, followed by sun drying that it, it detoxifies and also it removes some of the bitter principles so this is a good source of protein almost 38 to 40 percent protein you can have and it can be included in concentrated mixtures up to 10 percent but you can uh, neem seed cake should be avoided in breeding bulls it's uh, because it is it has some problem with reproduction coming to the next pongamia uh, pongamia of course is a karanja you can say karanja here and uh, these also grow in different parts of uh, uh, AP, Karnataka, and other the, uh, the tuna is almost 0.5 million tons uh, availability is there. So, Karanjan oil is, is almost like a biofuel, it can be used. And uh, once the oil is extracted, the residual cake contains with some of the uh, Karanjans, Pongamal, and other, they are highly unpalatable. So, detoxification process is just removing, removal, removal of the oil and subsequent reflexing with aqueous solvent. Uh, removed almost uh, this uh, residual toxins. So this also we try to use it at uh, very low levels in the medium producing dairy cattle. Similarly, at other institutes, uh, they have been soaked with 1% sodium hydroxide for 24 hours and uh, they followed by sun drying, detoxified completely this uh, Karanja, cake, Karanja seed cake. So the detoxified Karanja cake is a good source of protein. 25 to 30% and are included in concentrated mixtures. In other, this uh, at other institutes they have tried. Uh, this is also another important uh, like a detoxified castor cake. Where exactly here in the castor, uh, you know, this is uh, it contains very resin, uh, is highly toxic material. So here also they developed one of the um, uh, since it is a protein supplement. Uh, first one is uh, by remove by soaking this uh, castor seed cake with lime, four percent weight by weight, and are followed by extrusion cooking. It completely they could remove this uh, resin, and this detoxified cake they used in PMR at ten to twelve percent level. This is also one of the important uh, uh, like is especially in uh, Ayurvedic medicinal residues. If you see the Indian Ayurvedic industry has a turnover of almost 3,500 crores. So the granular growth rate is almost 7 to 10%. So there are about 7,800 medicinal units in India, includes 14 well-recognized and 1886 medium scale manufacturers of herbal drugs. So, but though we do not have this potential availability estimates, but thousands of tons of herbs are employed in these medicinal preparations. So here, basically, there are two types of uh, uh, residues are available, like Sherabala uh, thylam residue and Dhanvantaram thylam residue. This, uh, one of our students has worked on these residues. So if you see this, uh, uh, the thylam residues, if you see, they have higher crude protein and ether extract. Almost, you can say, uh, 21 to 27% CP and 11 to 23%. Uh, ether extract it is having whereas kashayam residues they are mostly fibrous so they you almost you can have almost protein content range from 5.5 to 6.5 and so this uh, can replace even 40 percent of the conventional protein supplements in concentrated mixtures so inclusion of thylam, thylam residues improve the meat quality so they they fed to these thylam residues to uh, goat species and uh, they, in terms of this uh, pufa and uh, uh, polyunsaturated fatty acid of meat uh, improved by feeding this uh, thylam residues and also it reduced the feed cost by 18 to 20 percent and this is the how this process so this, uh, there will be different type of herbs and spices condiments along with the, uh, this sesame oil they put in the milk and uh, this uh, they go on uh, pressing pressing so that this sort of residue will come this is the only available uh, for, uh, and this is, this is a highly aromatic and also uh, it, the keeping quality is very good. So almost uh, one year, uh, one or two years also nothing is happening. So probably highly 
you can keep it for more uh, even and that is uh, the animals also releasing very much if you see the uh, com chemical composition here at almost it is having a good, good amount of protein uh, and also you can see this uh, lether extract almost 12% because of most they are using oil thylum so then they did some of the like tannins it is almost 1% tannin it is having Nine, around 9.4 to uh, I think this is what you see, this saponins and uh, some of essential oils also it is having. For example, okay, some of the essential oils also they did, it is a good source of essential oils. So these are all the things and uh, we conducted one of the, uh, you can see, yeah, a 150 day feeding trial we were conducted, though in this, uh, uh, they did not affect any feed intake of this, uh, uh, goat and also all the digestibility hematological parameters also uh, you can even remain the same if you can replace the 40 percent uh, cp replay by these medicinal residues rumen fermentation in terms of ph ammonia nitrogen and tvfa also not affected so and also they did a bacterial profiling rumen bacterial profiling also was not affected by feeding this cherubalam or narmadram thailam residues this also our one of the uh, we worked on this silk worm pp also and this is very much uh, is a very good quality protein having good amount of lysine methanin and is rich in uh, unsaturated fatty acids so the protein of the silk worm is uh, having high bypass value and can replace your groundnut cake by one third of course only problem with this is it is having objectionable order so we can overcome by adding molasses or jaggery so silk worm pipe is uh, of course this oil also is uh, used although what you can uh, uh, our people did uh, to convert them into calcium salts of fatty acid there is nothing but a bypass fat nowadays what, what we are telling and it can be fed to the diets of sheep almost uh, they work uh, they replace up to five percent of the, uh, at the at a level of five percent no adverse effect was seen and also the growth rate improved in case of sheep this uh, so, so far, uh, these are the things what uh, I'm planning to discuss. So, so we have uh, so many new feed resources have been evaluated and documented. So, why you want to evaluate? So, we want to first reduce the dependency of these conventional ingredients as well as, uh, uh, no, no, and also there's some uh, irregular supplies are there. So, so, at that time, this will come to you, the rescue. And also, you need to first work out the uh, depending on the regional availability and you need to make a small database of how where it is available where I, so like that uh, you, some novel strategy you need to formulate and also some of the problem with this uh, unconventional features farmers generally not normal they don't use it so because of this some perceptions wrong but they that also you need to educate them that uh, so that they they can affect or, or like some of the local milk unions kvks organized uh, livestock farms and village help self groups also all the uh, they can act as uh, uh, they, they'll try to uh, help us help us in uh, adopting these new feed resources because normally they don't like to adopt to this, uh, this. so first uh, availability this is one of the limitation is that availability so uh, this available you have to tap it and also quantity and some of the anti-nutritional factors like tannins, bitters, they need to be removed effectively. And some collection, you need to organize it, collection has to be there. And also you need to develop some of the cost-effective processing methods. If the processing method is uh, costly, then uh, people may not be used. And also one more thing, the byproducts of this uh, processing, suppose for example, neem you are doing, or karanji. Neem oil is very expensive. So neem oil and karanji oil, they, you can just uh, uh, separate them. Uh, that uh, and also the cake also you can ask you can use it as a animal feed uh, that is one thing you can put. and also you can uh, all those whatever we discuss uh, you can uh, include them in uh, limited quantities as a part of your total diet thank you very much for your patient listening thank you sir thank you yeah. so much for such an elaborative and extensive lecture about the unconventional feed resources so there are a few questions in the inbox shall we take them now yeah yeah please please okay so the first... 
Shall I stop this sharing? Ha, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can stop sharing your presentation. Yeah. yeah. So then, first question is from Dr. Praveen Luna Garia. Okay. Um, Dr. Praveen is asking: Can areca sheet can utilize for animal feeding after dishes and other products utilized for serving human meat? No, no, no. That uh, again is a problem. So if there is a uh, after the plate manufacturing is there, the dried thing you can use it. After human servings, uh, it, it should not be used because of ethical reasons. Uh, and if there is any mechanism to wash them properly and dry them, sterilize them, then it can be fed to cattle. Otherwise, we need to uh, dispose them of. After human thing, uh, we should not uh, use it. Okay, okay, sir. So we cannot use it. Yeah. So then, second question is from uh, Chirag Parmar. Can we use sugar cane trash in small ruminants? Sugar cane trash in small ruminants. Uh, yeah, what I can do, uh, basically, uh, as a part of uh, PMR or something like that. But you can use it for uh, uh, not for kids or uh, lambs. Maybe for adult non-maintenance type of um, uh, goats uh, or sheep, you can uh, chaff it and uh, use it as a part of a complete, uh, total mix operation. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. The next question is from Sachin Gautam. Uh, he is asking, what are the indicators that a particular unconventional feed can be used in livestock feeding? What are the indicators? Indicators like um, uh, what are the measures or parameters on the basis of which we select that it can be used as unconventional feed or it cannot be used? I think you have explained in your yeah, I'll second explain. Last yeah, time. yeah. Basically, it should not contain any uh, nutritional factors, and it should be like. Uh, uh, already I discussed this, so those things you are, and it should be available in plenty. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not that small quantities means you cannot use it. So all those things you have to make. In my write-up, I had given, I think, some of the points. Yes, sir, yes, sir. We will provide them in the book published, yeah. sir. Yeah. Then uh, the next question is from Pavan. Um, he's asking, sir, can you throw light uh, on feeding of brewery grains and health condition or it, and its demerits? Yeah, yeah. Actually, one uh, the problem what we had faced with the feeding of brewery grains, especially the wet farms, uh, that cattle uh, they they like very much, uh, in the sense that uh, the, milk, uh, the product the milk uh, production also improved a lot. They were telling, especially in a, some of the nearby Bangalore farms, they were feeding. The problem with uh, uh, once you stop this, and the cattle uh, the the milk production is going down drastically, so it is not coping up. So that is one problem with this uh, demerits. Or if you can dry it, can dry it and use it as a as a protein supplement. It, uh, but only wet pro wet is a problem. Wet delivery grains. So either you need to use it uh, uh, very. For example, uh, uh, one load you have got. For example, one dairy farm has got one load of delivery grains. So it should be completed within three four days. Otherwise, uh, all this fungus uh, the growth will come and it will spoil. So that is one of the demerit of this uh, wet grains, wet blueberry grains. Yes, sir. As you have explained in your presentation, also, sir. Yeah. Then the next question is from Dr. Uh, Kirat Sai Savarna. Uh, he's asking, sir, can we prepare silage by using tomato pomace along with green fodders after reducing the moisture in green fodders? Tomato plus green fodders. Tomato pomace plus green fodders. Can yeah, we use tomato them? pomace. I already explained it has some mm -hmm. more protein. Yes, is have more protein, so any any normally you can you have to work out you have to work out uh, different combinations uh, initially in the lab level. Uh, once you find out optimum, you can find then that you can uh, go for in the bulk production. So it has to be experimented. So maybe uh, five percent level, ten percent level, uh, or fifteen percent level. Then graded levels you have to take along with this green fodder and. Uh, you can and sell them in uh, small bottles. Then uh, you find out those parameters, silage parameters. Suppose if you can find uh, one particular optimized one combination, that you can uh, go for bulk product. It is a researchable issue. We have not done any uh, that uh, that we can try. Okay, sir. So then this is the last question. And before asking this, I request the participants to further. If there is any question further, please inbox it in the message box. So the last you can directly also uh, use the voice. Uh, you can unmute and ask their question directly. 
Uh, you can also unmute yourself after this, after answering, addressing this question and ask from the sir. The last question is from uh, Suresh Ramalingam. He's asking, sir, please share your views about the oxalate content of sugarcane trash. Yeah. Yes, sugarcane has uh, some oxalate. I just forgot to mention that uh, uh, it is very so, especially if you long term feeding of sugarcane uh, trash, uh, it will has it will affect the calcium utilization. Uh, so you need to either more uh, increasing the uh, calcium level in the diet. Uh, that is one one approach. Or you do you need not to you should not feed. Uh, for longer periods that is one of the oxalate contents is one of the uh, impeding factor in uh, sugarcane uh, so these things even the paddy star to some extent is there having is having oxalates even hybrid napier all those things so, so these things have to be uh, they impede the utilization of calcium so you need to either increase the uh, little bit require uh, supplement the additional calcium to these animals or maybe restricting to shorter periods of feeding. OK, sir. So there is one more question from Mamta Jaiswal. Can we use byproducts of jackfruit as a source of fermentable source of energy, just like maize? Source of jackfruit residue? Uh, jackfruit byproduct as a source of fermentable source of energy, just fermentable like maize. Source. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has a, it's a good amount of sugars. Uh, you can use, uh, but uh, compared to maize grain, it may not be. Uh, you can use as a fermentable. Uh, in which species she is uh, she wants to feed it as a such as such or as. Sir, a, it is a general question. Ah, general question, sir. Yeah, she can. Uh, in pigs, in it. pigs, she is asking, sir. In pigs. Ah, in pigs. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I know I don't have much experience in pigs. Uh, is she is she working in somewhere in NRC pig or somewhere out? Uh, I don't have idea, sir. Okay, um, no problem. Okay, so you can explain in some other species also if you want to. No, okay. no, well, just we don't have any much experience in uh, pigs and all that. Really. Okay, sir. Okay, mm -hmm. then uh, next question is from Pavan. Uh, he's asking, sir, in Andhra Pradesh, some region people will feed cattle with Bengal gram husk and observe some dermatosis at limb extremities, tip of tail, whether it is any reason, a relation? Bengal gram husk. Uh, there is some dermat okay. dermatosis at limb extremities or tip of tail after feeding Bengal gram husk. Like, have you ever, uh, have you any uh, practical no, experience about no, this or something? No, yes, I don't have any practical experience. OK, sir. Yeah. Okay, sir. Then there is one more question from Asu Singh Godhara. Godhara. Fossils of uh, sea shell can be used as feed in animals. Fossils of sea shell? Eh? Yes, sir. Whether they can be used as feed or unconventional feed source? Uh, fossils. Uh, sea beads and all is a good source of uh, this thing. Uh, sea beads and all, you can use it. Especially okay, nowadays, a lot of research is going on on seaweeds in uh, anti methanogenic uh, uh, as a to reduce the methanogenic methanogenesis in the ruminants. Uh, effectively, I'll just let you you can share my email, I'll just uh, give him a uh, okay, okay, sir. Then, one more question is from Sarika Godara Is yes. silage feeding safe for advanced pregnant cattle? Yeah, then there should not be any problem. Okay, sir. No okay. okay. So this is the end of the questions in the inbox. Yeah. Anybody else who want to ask question from sir, they can raise their hand and our organizers may unmute them. So I think so this can, is all. We can only uh, mute. The uh, unmute process is from the, because for privacy reasons, the participants have to unmute themselves. Okay, sir. If the participant, one, any participant, if they want to ask any question from sir they can unmute themselves and ask the question we uh, sir will be aud uh, you will be audible to sir i don't think there are any further questions there were some 
సార్ గోపన్ సార్ దిస్ ఇస్ కృష్ణ కుమార్ ఫ్రమ్ తమిళనాడు ఇట్స్ వెరీ ఎక్సలెంట్ ప్రెసెంటేషన్ సార్ బట్ ఐ వాంట్ టు నో సమ్ ఆఫ్ ద పాయింట్స్ రిలేటెడ్ టు రోల్ ఆఫ్ సాక్రమైసిస్ సర్వీసీఏ ఇన్ ది డైజెస్టబిలిటీ ఆఫ్ ఫైబర్ ఈస్ట్ ఎస్ సర్ ఎస్ సర్ సాక్రమైసిస్ సర్వీసీఏ ఫీడ్ సప్లిమెంట్స్ డైరీ క్యాటిల్ అండ్ ఆల్ డెఫినెట్లీ ఐ డోంట్ ఎగ్జాక్ట్ డేటా రైట్ నో బట్ యూ కెన్ uh definitely it improves the uh, fiber degradability yeah okay hello hello yes you have any any further question please ask hello yeah yes yes dr ramesh you can ask ha ha my sir dr ramesh patil from parpani maharashtra okay sir yeah uh, sir my question is uh, can we uh, at uh, what uh, limit uh, uh, we add uh, gavar meal uh, in poultry feed in percentage gavar meal ha sir gavar meal gavar meal uh, poultry are not much experience uh, okay. probably it is i think we cannot use more than uh, uh, ah. cannot completely uh, replace honey, at, uh, at what uh, percent sir we can replace to particularly this uh, soya uh, this uh, uh, soya bean meal ah. so i will i know and i don't have much okay. idea about okay. poultry yes sir yeah. thank you sir so there is one more question in inbox can broom grass be used as fodder in cattle any limitations please suggest sir broom grass. grass yes sir okay okay which part of this uh, question from kashmir huh? which is ah uh, yes sir yes sir dr mahmudul uh, hasan khan yeah you you should only say, <laughs> tell me <maybe, laughs> the answer <laughs> Okay. No, we can use the home glass. There's, there is nothing bad in that. We can use. We are using the other. We are using here. Yeah. Uh, no, sir. Dr. Mohamudil is working so, in North East Himalayan region okay. of Darjeeling. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, anyway our, uh, Dr. Sudesh has already answered this question. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay. Then thank you so much, sir. Uh, I don't think so. There are any further questions. sir i want to thank you once again for accepting our request to deliver your valuable uh, lecture on this platform and to share your views with our participants and uh, i hope they are very well sensitized and uh, if any researcher want to work further on this area like of unconventional feed resources or to fight with the fodder scarcity issues they can now um, consider the points you have told in your lecture thank you so much sir thank you thank you thank you very much thank you uh, organizers for giving me the opportunity especially radhotra ji and uh, other uh, nadcl thanks thank dr ji uh, on my behalf uh, and on, on behalf of my team you delivered a beautiful lecture elaborative lecture on uh, use of alternative food i think uh, every participant is satisfied and you enrich me also by uh, adding that uh, we can use uh, dhanvandram what is that dhanvantram dhanvantri dhanvantri i have never i have never uh, even uh, known about it but you added yeah. uh, in my knowledge thank you very much yeah one of the student has worked uh, recently has completed his uh, uh, this uh, ayurvedic medicinal research from kerala that boy was working yes, uh, yeah thank you <laughs> thank you bye. bye thank bye. you bye okay, thank, thank you, you thank you everyone hey thank you sir and thanks mother thank you thank you thank you everyone on behalf of the organizers and uh, on behalf of our students thank you thank you everyone for being with us join back tomorrow at 11 thank you thank you thank you bye bye sir